Tonight I'm all alone, no place to call my home. Don't have no one to love me anymore. On the back of my grip. Hi folks, I'm back uh, with another video in the passing chord series. Uh, we've been doing some C licks and D licks that kind of change positions with your left hand, kind of goes in between um, uh, down the neck positions and more up the neck positions. Um, last time we did some D licks uh, and we, we talked about uh, the last one we did uh, was. Uh, and now what we're going to do is to do a one that's uh, a little bit more famous that you hear a lot and it's up the neck uh, and it's good to do in backup whenever you've got one measure of the five chord or in this case uh, the D chord if we're playing out of the key of G uh, and it was what I just played there at the beginning uh, and it sounds more complicated than it is it's not too terribly difficult once you understand what's going on it's still kind of connecting some of these pieces uh, different chord positions on the fingerboard but it, I would tell you that it is tough to do up to speed and you, you usually hear this on a medium to up tempo number but it's a, also a good way to, to transition from doing kind of the up the neck you know some of that kind of back up uh, to get back down the neck so it's it, it walks down it sounds very similar to what we did before except we're up the neck so it's that'll get you back down to the open uh, open G and then you can start into more of a rolling back up in between so it's good to do uh, on, on verses uh, kind of halfway through the verse okay that's got a, a, like a first part of the verse and the second part of the verse which kind of sounds similar to break it up and what we're doing uh, is going from the, the F position D chord okay which is right here at the, and I had to count frets, the math teacher in me, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right, so we're at the 12th fret with our, um, on the fourth string and the first string, okay? And then our second string is at the 10th fret, and our third string is at the 11th fret, and that forms our D chord, okay? Except for the most part, we're gonna be sticking to the first string and the third string. Okay, and you'll actually see me sometimes kind of neglect the other strings. It kind of depends on what kind of sound I'm wanting at the, that particular time. But So I'm going to be doing some pinches on the first and third string especially. If you, if you can work in the fourth string, you, uh, you can do that and alternate it. Okay, you can do it fretted with the fourth string or you can do it open to kind of get that ringing kind of, kind of sound going on as you're, as you're doing the... Uh, the lick okay so we're gonna start by doing just a pinch on the first and third string and then you slide everything down two frets and do the same thing again okay and now you go down another fret with your pinky on the first string and now you've got to it's kind of like you're switching between the F shape and the D shape and it's like you switch to the D shape and now in between the first uh, the, the first string and the third string, you've got a, a blank fret in between, okay? Whereas before, when you're doing the F position, if you look at the first string and third string, there's uh, one fret in between, okay? One fret, back down two spaces, one fret. And then it's like you switch positions and you go to the D shape, and now you've got two frets in between, or you've got a, uh, an empty fret. And then you go down two frets and do the same thing. You slide everything down two frets. And then I'll, that'll get you back down to the open G. Okay, so real slow, it's back down two. Change positions. Back down two. Open. Okay, and, and if you were just learning it, you can get away with just doing that. So, whoops, excuse me. Very similar to that we did before, okay? So that's about as sparse as you can make it. Um, let me see if I can put it in another song. Rolling in my sweet baby's arms. Rolling in my sweet baby's arms. Lay around 
shack to the measure comes back. So anytime you've got that one measure of uh, the D chord or the five chord right in the middle of a break, uh, excuse me, of a verse or a chorus, it's a great time to put that progression in. And once again, it gets you from doing the up the neck kind of back up stuff and then back to the down the neck stuff. You can start rolling. Uh, let's, let's start adding a few more little wrinkles to that lick, okay? So the most common thing to do is to go And that's to, instead of going down the two frets there, is to kind of uh, have a little filler. In, in, and that is to, uh, instead of going down two frets, is to go down one. So it's same same thing we are doing before. Change positions. Okay. thing that's kind of tough about it, it's all very syncopated so you really do need to have the the, the band there to, to help lay the groundwork so you don't get lost in all of the the syncopation okay that's one thing and then the next thing is to start adding in the fourth string and you can do the fourth string either fretted or you can do the fourth string open sounds better okay sounds good you can also do a roll uh, and the roll sounds pretty good uh, and that's what you'd actually leave the four string fretted on that one okay and sometimes you hear it uh, I can't do it up to speed uh, like this, but it'll go like halfway down and then it'll go back up a fret and then go back down. It sounds like this. Okay, so all kinds of things you, you'll can, you can hear. And if you're aware of the lick and you practice it and kind of get it down, and then you start listening to things, you'll hear all kinds of variations of that lick. Uh, in many many songs so I wanted to, to leave you with that for the D's I got probably two more videos one video the next video is going to be some more uh, ways to get back down the neck uh, and then I like transition between chords uh, so from a D from a G to a D kind of thing and then another one is from a, a, a G to a G7 to a C and then one more video is to kind of put that in context of some slower backup both in the teardrop and the, the tremolo stuff. Okay, and you can see that it's the same positions we've been doing in other videos in the series, except it's going to be applied to slower songs. So I uh, hope to see you then. Thanks.